Welcome, everybody. Today, I'm going to do a very short bit. It's, it's about why my particular show on YouTube, Profiling with Pat Brown, is not like Crime Junkies. <laughs> and I know there's a lot of people who love Crime Junkies, and it's a very popular show. And um, many, many uh, true crime lovers like different kinds of crime podcasts, and they they like uh, the, the YouTube crime shows where uh, they, they they go to them all the time. They're, they subscribe, and they hear about all the different true crime stories, and they find them very exciting and interesting and fascinating. And I am not going to say I'm totally knocking them, but I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this show, Profiling with Pat Brown, and how I'm not like the other shows and I'm going to tell you the reason why for myself and then the reason why it's also good for you. Um, first, before I start, I just want to tell you a real quick summation of who I am and what I've done so you know where I'm coming from. Uh, I, I run the Pat Brown Criminal Profiling Agency. I've been in profiling for 20 years. Um, right now, what I'm doing with the profiling agency is I'm working with my partner to develop a uh, profiling methodology for detectives, because I believe that detectives are the real profilers, not what you see with the FBI, not what you see on TV, and even independent people like myself. Yes, we can profile, but the problem is the detectives are the ones on the front lines, and they're getting the cases, and they need to do good crime scene analysis and profiling in the first 48, and not you know, when it becomes a cold case, and then, oh, you know, maybe somebody will help with this. Uh, detectives are really profilers. That's what they do. They, they they analyze the evidence and then they do their investigation. So I want to bring profiling, a special kind of profiling called deductive profiling, investigative profiling, where uh, they have a methodology that helps them do it well um, and then solve cases, uh, you know, have more success in solving cases, especially weird cases like serial homicides or you know, not where somebody just shoots somebody and, and the witnesses go, it was him. Uh, you know, kind of confusing cases where you do need to look at the crime scene and figure out exactly what happened and then who might have done it and which leads to follow and which leads not to follow. So that's that's my purpose for the criminal profiling agency. Uh, and one of the other things I've done in the past as far as educating, I developed the first criminal profiling certificate program in the country for Excelsior College. Uh, very proud of that, but unfortunately, the college decided to, uh, so let's say, water it down, and then they shortened it, and I don't even know if it's there anymore, and I wouldn't even recommend it. I'm hoping to bring that here to YouTube to bring the education of criminal profiling to out to the public, to people who want to be profilers, people who just want to learn about profiling, and to law enforcement who might want to study more of this, uh, bring it to to the public in an easy way where you don't have to uh, join, uh, you know, enter into a college uh, to, be able, to be able to do so. So that is going to be another part of why I'm here on YouTube with this new show, Profiling with Pat Brown. Um, now, what else have I done? Uh, <laughs> I have, I've been in this business, I say, quite a while, and I've, I have had so many experiences. Uh, Another thing I've done in the past is seminars for law enforcement. And here you can see me um, right over here. Uh, I was actually in Delhi, India, um, and you can see me in my salary. I was invited over there to, to uh, do a training session. Very, very, a very fun opportunity. And I've also done a lot of television. Um, I was a regular on the Nancy Grace show. Uh, uh, so many shows. Uh, I've done talk shows and 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 HLN and CNN, and I've been on the Today Show many times. Um, I've done documentaries on on crimes, and I don't do that anymore. And you may wonder why, because I did over three thousand appearances in my life, and I did enjoy it. But over the recent years, what I've seen happening with television is they care less and less about the facts, and they're more and more focused on agendas. So if they want to uh, talk about a particular crime, they may have already decided who they want to focus on. Not not the facts, but this will make it exciting or we, we want to go after this person. And then they bring me on and try to get me to uh, support whatever they're trying to say rather than get my expert opinion. So I have sort of parted ways with television and even documentaries because sometimes they have really, really bad agendas and they will uh, 
but basically they're going to edit the heck out of me once I've finished the show. And then when I see myself in the show, it's not even what I said. Uh, so I won't do that anymore unless I have a particularly uh, a good producer, somebody I truly trust and a good contract to go with it that will lock in that what I say is going to stay in there um, and, I, and I'm not going to be duped into something. So I will do certain shows if, if I feel they're worthy of doing. But I do miss doing television. And, and one of the other things that was problematic with television is that you get sound bites. And one of the great things about YouTube is I don't have any sound bites anymore. I can reach out to all my viewers, my participants, and my subscribers and really get into things and explain things. And I find that is really what I want to do. Um, now, also, I am an author. Uh, these are four books I've written on profiling and crime scene analysis, and they can be found at Amazon and other places. Uh, and I'm going to continue writing and, and adding adding more books out there uh, for people to read. Um, and uh, But that's basically about, about who I am in general. Uh, but now, why am I doing this show? Uh, when I uh, was involved in television, and I noticed that with the journalism, the journalism often didn't care that the truth was being put out there. What they wanted was a great story, an exciting story, and something that will suck you in. Uh, so th it was interesting that some journalists put out uh, um, shows. Sometimes they do like say a documentary and it was going to be a four part documentary uh, and an hour each. And there were four hours of no facts, four hours of speculation and, and pointing things and making creepy music, kind of like we see sometimes uh, Netflix is doing some of these too now. And some of them are pretty egregious. And they come, they, they put together this very, very nice production. Um, and therefore people get fascinated by it and they get sucked in. And I understand the enjoyment factor and it's interesting, but it's not necessarily true. A journalists are not crime scene analysts. They're not in law enforcement. They're not criminal profilers. They're telling a story. And a good portion of the time, they aren't telling the story uh, with any knowledge of what's true and what isn't true. And uh, one of the reasons I brought up Crime Junkies is because I saw that when I listened to one of their shows. Now, mind you, very popular show. And the women's, women's voices are very nice, uh, very easy to listen to. Uh, just they sound so good. And they, they interact really nicely. Um, and that's why they're popular. And when I, what I did was I picked a show that I particularly knew the content of. I listened to the show on Madeleine McCann. And um, I was told this is a great show. And they put all their sources at the end of it. So you know where they got their information. And, and so I listened to it. It was very pleasant. However, none of the, it wasn't factual. And when I looked at their sources, all their sources were tabloids. And I'm like, you can't get facts from tabloids. You can get an idea of the, the story, but you can't get facts. And I found it also interesting that uh, the two, there are three big sources when it comes to the facts of the Madeleine McCann case. One is the police files from Portugal. They hadn't accessed that. The second thing was the detective on the case, Gonzalo Amaral, wrote a book. They didn't have that in their sources. And I also wrote a book, and I'm not in that source either. So I know that they're, they're telling the story, and they're going, oh, my God, and now they have a new suspect. And, you know, he, he, oh, he was in the area. And I'm like, okay, this is, not, this is not the way it is. But everybody's, you know, out there in listening audiences just, you know, just sitting there on their seats going, oh, this is so interesting. But it's not necessarily the truth. and It's not necessarily reality. Uh, the same is happening on YouTube shows. Uh, there are some shows out there now with million subscribers. And they, the person hosting the show does a crime show every week or every two times a week. Sometimes they do 20, 40, 50 shows on the same crime uh, because they draw their audience in and they make it exciting and they're not, again, criminal profilers. They're not even journalists. They're sort of regular folks who are interested in true crime, and they started their show. Some of them are very pretty. Um, and I, some, I saw some shows that combine crime and makeup. 
<laughs> it's kind of fun. It's like the girl sitting there, she's like talking about the crime and she's doing, you know, okay. And then he puts some eyeshadow on and I understand why people like it. Um, but it isn't necessarily good information. And this is what I'm about. I want to put something out there. That's great information. Um, I'm not going to be a slick show. Uh, they're the, some of the journalists who put these things together and even the YouTube people, they have slick shows. Uh, are very impressive. I mean, they've got videos in there and they're telling the story and they've got great interviews and then they've got things that pop up on the screen and very cool. Uh, but you spend, if you do that, you spend a tremendous amount of your time developing the actual the video content and not so much time actually learning about the truth and the facts. So I'm not going to do that. I personally, I just don't really want to do that. And I just want people to be able to come here and have me talk about a crime and learn from it and not have the, the enticement of what looks like a fancy Netflix movie. Um, and I think that's important because sometimes you, you know, when I listen to some of these myself, it, you, you, you believe them because they're so gorgeous, you know, because it's being displayed in such a way that it just feels like you're there and you're involved in it. And, and that journalist is telling you in the soothing voice. And then we, we discussed this with a so-and-so and, -so and we, we found evidence of this. And, and it's not necessarily so, you know, but it can be very convincing because psychologically it draws you in. I don't want to convince you. Uh, I'm not going to try to convince you of anything. What I want to do with my show and, and have done, I've been out here now for a little while, and um, I take crimes and, and I have my subscribers are able to uh, recommend what crimes they want to have me do. I've done one on the Madeleine McCann case. I've done one on Jean Benet. I just did one on Jill Dando. Um, so I will do these different cases that people are interested in. But what I'm going to do and what is I, I study the case and I study the crime scene information and then I will be there and I do put up information behind me. I put things on the screen like right behind me now but so you can see the crime scene or you can see who I'm talking about. It's not fancy but it just gives you a setting of what I'm going to be uh, discussing. And then I will go through the crime and I will show you how I profile. I will show you how I do crime scene analysis. Sometimes I'll even demonstrate, like, you know, put the gun up to her head, you know, I'll do things like that so that you can sort of see how it all played out. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a gorgeous 30 year old girl anymore. I, I'm not going to do makeup on the show. <laughs> I know I'm, I, I don't really have a soothing voice. I, I understand that I have a harsh voice. But that's me, and I'm going to just be me, and I'm not ruled by television, uh, so there, I'm not working for any of the networks. I'm not working for academia. I'm here for you, and this show is going to be about learning about how crimes are analyzed and, and, and understanding them and understanding what you may hear out in the rest of the media may be a whole bunch of bunk because they're selling a story, not the truth necessarily, or they just want to tell you a story and they don't even know what the truth is. I'm going to break it down for you. So if you are just someone who wants to, to figure out what really happened, um, may not be a popular concept. Uh, you know, I've, I've done, I sometimes do shows and I've done things in the past where I've said, the evidence shows me this. And then I get uh, people unsubscribing or sending me hate mail, but because they wanted some different story, I'm not, doing that, I'm going to tell you what I see and I'm going to bring you along with me so you can see what I'm saying. I will explain it to you, I will show you, and then you can decide for yourself, is, does that make sense? Uh, does the evidence support what Pat Brown is saying? It, does, she, does she have the right suspect? You know, so I want to, I teach, I want to teach, uh, but in a fun way because it's not a, going to be a boring show. Um, so I, 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 I'm looking forward to doing all kinds of things with this channel. I already do live every Sunday at three o'clock and that will be a show. I go as long as people are enjoying it and I have things to say. Um, and that gives me a chance to really interact with everybody. So when you come on, I do look at your comments. I bring them onto the screen and I try to answer th things. I sometimes you know, ask you questions uh, so that we get involved with solving a crime. Um, and so I'll, I have the live shows every week. Uh, I've done some profiling at the movies where I take movies that 
people really love, and sometimes I say I really hate them, <laughs> because the profiling is so bad or they're representing serial killers in a way that no serial killer has ever existed. Uh, so I break it, the movie down, not on the quality of the acting or the great script, just that I'm trying to say, is this realistic? Is this the way this killer would be? And I rate the movies, like some movies I think are really great depictions of criminals or profiling or detectives. And other ones I'm like, eh, not so much, pretty, pretty terrible depiction. Maybe a great movie, but a terrible depiction of real life. Uh, so I'm doing that. Um, I will also be doing some historic profiling. As you can see over here, I've written a whole book on the murder of Cleopatra. I did a Discovery Channel show on that. I analyzed the crime scene. I got rid of the snake. There's no cobra that killed Cleopatra. Um, and I also believe she was murdered and she did, didn't commit suicide. I'll be doing a whole series on that. I also did another one in the past on Jack the Ripper uh, for Mystery Files, and I'm going to do a series on Jack the Ripper uh, and other crimes from way back in history that are well known and quite famous. Uh, so I'll be, that'll be fun. I will probably be, I will be doing my Pat Brown School of Profiling, criminal profiling for you all. Uh, and that will be separate from the live shows. I'll be doing aspects like blood spatter pattern. What does that mean? Different uh, psych the psych the psychopathy issues. Uh, how do serial killers behave? And you know, all the all things about crime scenes. How do you analyze a crime scene in little bits and pieces? So you can just come on. I'll do a small you know, 10 minute segment on some issue of criminal profiling. And that way students can come there and gather all kinds of information, learn a lot about criminal profiling and crime scene analysis. And it'll be accessible to everyone. Um, and I'm looking forward to starting that. Uh, so that'll be a part of this program as well. Um, and I, I have some other uh, fun ideas that I may, may do, like maybe I'll do ask the profiler because I have people saying, do you think, do you think my boyfriend's a psychopath? Uh, and then they tell me the story and I'm thinking, run, run. <laughs> so I may be doing a, uh, if enough people want me to, I may be doing a, some kind of uh, hour where you can ask me questions and, uh, you know, maybe it'll be a private, private uh, chat on, on, you know, on YouTube where you can ask me questions about real life. And if you see over here, I wrote the book, How to Save Your Daughter's Life. And that was about things that your daughter could get, get into that, that could be dangerous, like things online, uh, certain kind of problems with boyfriends that she gets sucked into, uh, possible prostitution, drugs, all these kind of things. Uh, and so I, I would be open for questions. So I think I'll be adding that later too. Uh, so that's basically it. I just wanted to let you know what this channel is about. Um, it will be uh, about me Ed, bringing education about the subject of criminal profiling and crime scene analysis in a fun and very logical and um, understandable way. I don't want to pontificate and say, well, then on this crime scene showed us blah, 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 blah. And then you think, oh, she's very smart, but you don't really learn from it. Uh, you know, I want to work with my the people who are uh, viewing the show so they so we, I can say hey see how this see see over here see how that looks over there um you know there's no way that this guy could have done that that's the way I'm going to discuss things in a way that's you know um it makes sense uh and and that's what crim criminal profiling is about that it's about logic true criminal profiling deductive criminal profiling isn't about guessing it isn't about saying and I think it's a white guy who lives with his mother and has a dog and a knife and a record collection from the 50s. And there's no evidence to support that. You just thought maybe it could be that. No, I'm doing deductive profiling, which is kind of like Sherlock Holmes, uh, although he's way better than me. Um, and Arthur Conan Doyle, who wrote the books, maybe if in real life he was quite a profiler, uh, he would take absolute evidence and then from that determine something. So that's what criminal profiling is about. And it's about, also, I want to let you know before, uh, you know, when you come to my shows, uh, criminal profiling, deductive profiling, analyzes the evidence and then determines a theory of what occurred based on the evidence. And I say the word theory because a lot of times people think that, oh, you know, she, she, she's not right. Well, you know, I may not be. The point about a theory, and this is true for detectives who are profiling their own cases, they have to look at the evidence, come up with a theory that gives them another avenue of investigation. And then when they go down that avenue, they gain more evidence if they're in the right direction. If the theory pans out, they're going to be able to collect the evidence and take it to court and get some bad guy put away. Uh, if, if the theory's way off the mark, 
it would waste a bunch of time. Uh, and so the idea is to have the best theory possible so that you can move forward with a case, gathering enough evidence then to be able to prosecute. It's, it's not some kind of psychic thing. It's not some kind of, oh, 100%, you know, this is what happened. You can't do that. But it is scientific in the sense that you should be basing things on evidence and thinking very logically. And that's what deductive profiling should be. And that's the kind of profiling I, I have done for 20 years. Um, and so I'll bring you on that journey with me. I hope, you know, for students, you'll learn a lot. For detectives, hopefully that will help you as well. And for people who just love true crime and because they like to understand how things go down and they wanna, wanna maybe be armchair profilers and that's okay with me. I just want you to have good methodology to understand what you're doing and not just make up some really crazy conspiracy theories and then tell me, what do you think about this? And I go, oh my God, no, no, absolutely no. <laughs> but but uh, it'll be, it, it's a fun, uh, I, I'm hoping to have uh, many of you join me uh, and I've really enjoyed my show so far, uh, all my shows that I've done so far. And I hope to be here for a long time and build the kind of channel that you want. And so I'm always accessible by email, um, at profilerpatbrown at gmail.com. Uh, you can also always comment below the videos. And I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. So you can contact me in those ways as well. And don't forget, subscribe, subscribe, like the button and hit that bell because the bell will inform you of new content. And I'm going to work hard to put up the kind of content you want. Uh, and uh, look forward to seeing you in the future. Uh, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. And um, you know, I just, I hope that, um, I hope that uh, this is a, a successful venture because it, it's, you know, it's something new to me. I've never done something like this before. I had a friend who, who encouraged me to do this and I was kind of like, really? <laughs> you know, I never even thought about YouTube, but now that I'm here, I rather like it because I have the freedom to provide the kind of uh, show that I want without anybody being my boss. Yeah. I'm the boss. So look forward to seeing you. Bye. Until later.